he said, you know, um, you're perfect, right? And I'm like, no, I'm not perfect. He said, let's think about this for a second, right? You look at yourself, you're not perfect. But the Bible says you're actually perfect and not only temporary, but forever. And I said, show me, right? You got to show me the paperwork, right? The receipts. <laughs> and he showed me Hebrews 10, 14, which said, for by one offering, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. King James Version. And so I was like, what does this mean, right? And really read the Bible like that. Mm -hmm. right? um, <clears throat> and he said, let's break it down. So he said, one offering. Who is this one offering? Jesus Christ. Everybody knows that. I said, that's true. I know that Jesus came to die for our sins. Mm -hmm. Atheists know that. But he said, through that one offering, he has perfected. He said, yes, you have a GED education, but even you know what tense is perfected in. And I said, past tense. Mm -hmm. He said, so if it's past tense, it means it's already completed. You're already perfect. I was like, what? And he said, temporarily or forever? And it says forever, right? Perfected forever. So he says, nothing is forever in this world, but eternally is forever, right? Eternity. So you're perfect eternally, and then you're also sanctified, past tense, which means made holy. Mm. But the issue, he says, is your thoughts tell you no. Your thoughts tell you you're a gang member. Your thoughts tell you that you're never going to change. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts tell you you're empty and you're lonely and you're depressed and you should live however you want. And their thoughts tell you you're going to go to hell. Mm -hmm. But the word of God that never changes tells you that you're righteous, perfect, forever, and holy. Mm. Which one are you going to trust today? So he challenged me. And I was like, dang, if I trust my thoughts, I'm going to live miserably. But if I trust this word that doesn't change and is from God, mm. then maybe that's the smarter route, right? Yeah. So when I trusted that, it was as if like this weight was lifted off of my shoulders, yeah. bro. Because I knew I was going to hell for the things that I did that I'm not proud of. Yeah. But um, he said, you know, where do perfect people go? And I was like, dang, they go yeah. to heaven. So for me, I was like, it was almost like comical to me. I'm like, I'm a gang member. I did crazy heinous things. Yeah. And this is the first person that ever told me that through Jesus, I'm going to heaven. That was crazy. Hey, guys, quick video on the subject of rightly dividing between standing and state. We cannot confuse a believer's position in Christ with their performance or practice in the world. In other words, the way in which they live. The moment you believe on Christ, you become a son of God. Of course, John chapter 1 verse 12 says, but as many as received him, referring to Christ, to them gave he power, notice this, to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. At the moment of salvation, you are washed, sanctified, and justified. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11 says, And such were some of you, but ye are what? Washed. But ye are sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of who? the Lord Jesus, and by the Spirit of our God. The believer is quickened or made alive and forgiven of all trespasses. Colossians chapter 2 verse 13, And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, referring to what? Our position prior to salvation, hath he quickened or made alive together with him, having forgiven you some trespasses. No, many trespasses. No, all trespasses. Those who trust in Christ are accepted in the beloved and have peace with God. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 6 says, To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Romans chapter 5 verse 1 says, Therefore being justified how? By water baptism? No. By turning from sins? No. By praying a prayer? No. By faith we have what? Peace with God through who? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Man is made righteous in the sight of God the moment faith is placed in the Savior. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 
it is imperative to understand that all of these passages pertain to our position in Christ, not our practice. Our standing before God, not our state. Don't miss that. My state is subject to change. My standing is not. I'll say that again. My state is subject to change. My standing is not. Meaning, my position in Christ cannot improve nor can it worsen. However, my state, my practice, the way in which I live can improve or it can worsen. The Corinthians were considered sanctified saints in standing, but carnal babes in state. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 2 says, Unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, don't miss that, called to be saints with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 1 says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Undoubtedly, our position in Christ should influence our practice in the world, the way in which we live. However, we must understand that no matter the believer's state, practically speaking, their position is perfect, secure, and unchanging. Watch this. Though our standing is not influenced by our state, our state should be influenced by our standing. I'll say that again. Though our standing is not influenced by our state, our state should be influenced by our standing. In other words, is who I am in practice consistent with who I am in position. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 3 says, But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you, watch this, as becometh saints. Notice, all believers are saints positionally. The question is, is their behavior as becometh saints? Again, is who you are in practice consistent with who you are in position? Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8. For ye were sometimes darkness prior to salvation, but now are ye light in the Lord. Positionally speaking, walk as children of light. Practically speaking. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. This passage is often misapplied to the believer's way of life rather than their new position in Christ. Practically speaking, did all aspects concerning the way in which I live become new at the moment of salvation? Stop and think about that. Did all of my old habits, vices, and struggles pass away? Notice, it did not say some things are become new, but rather all things are become new. This is a classic case of conflating position with practice, standing with state. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 14 says, For by one offering... He hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Philippians chapter 3 verse 12. Not as though I had already attained. Notice this. Either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Here we see the distinction between being perfected positionally and being perfected practically. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 14 is concerning our standing 
Philippians chapter 3 verse 12 is pertaining to our state. My friend, a proper division between standing and state is absolutely necessary. As always, failure to rightly divide the word of truth results in confusion and contradiction. If you are not 100% certain that you're going to heaven when you die, I encourage you to watch the video in the description below, How to Be Saved from Hell, The Only Way to Heaven, and Be Saved Today. God bless.